wonderful people for grappling arts in our association. Judging by the amount of schools, I've been to 18 schools already and I've been to them more than once. Um, after tonight, you'll see what I mean. You're just going to get, you'll just get a, an opening tonight. It goes into weeks and weeks. And when I was in Colorado, I taught a, a six and a half hour class. And uh, when I was at Vacaville at the Travis Air Force Base, I taught an eight hour class one day, a two hour class the night before. But seeing how those guys are all Air Force personnel and, and used to working hard and running around, they thought they could take it, but they didn't. They were all beat the next day. By Sunday, I heard nothing but complaints. So I tried to not go full eight hour and six hour Saturdays anymore because after about six techniques, people just forget. They don't know what they're doing. So I'll break it down to something smaller. If uh, Robert wants me back here again, I'll be glad to come back in another month or so. Because I, I still teach at these schools. I have to find time to get them in as well as my own job. I work for the city of Los Angeles and I, I've been there for quite a while. And uh, <clears throat> I um, agreed to let Robert take this class for your instruction later on. I really don't like to be taped and that's my own personal reasons for it, which I discussed with him. Uh, any questions because if you don't remember a thing then we're going to go over it you know he can just ask him if he can back up the tape and so on and so forth uh, in the association right now there's a little there's some there's some problems in the association right now in the upper echelons and they're they're vamping it out right now uh, her name is bernie yeah, well, <laughs> i didn't mention anybody names but some people are just stuck that this is the way things are and, and, and nothing else to do well, I happen to know for a fact that Jimmy Wu had a nephew who was an excellent wrestler and used to take him down all the time and make Jimmy find ways to get out of it. A lot of the locks I show you tonight, there will be an escape. A lot of them there won't be. There's just no way out. I was, I was at a seminar a couple weeks ago and one of the things uh, Master Bill Lasseter from Ontario brought up, and I don't know if you've ever watched Master Larry Lasseter. He's, He's been in the art for 30 years, and the guy's just phenomenal. Just to watch him work out, you can't believe it. When the guy told me he was 57 years old, I thought, no way, he was fast. Um, he had commented that I need to show some more escapes. Well, unfortunately, there is no escapes for these, other than get your arm broken or your ankle broken, or if you lock it up, you're stuck in it. I'm not gonna stick, um, to introduce you to some of this stuff, uh, I've heard it called, well, you're, you're pretty good at ground fighting. Well, this isn't ground fighting. This is, this is grappling. It falls in a, a chin na san su. I don't know if you've ever heard of chin na, meaning in Chinese, meaning grappling arts, uh, and san su. And there is an art in China called chin na san su, and it's distant cousin to this, and it's just not brought out very much in our art. So that's what I've been doing, traveling to all these schools that Whoever calls me, I know so good at any school, by the way. I do not just say, sure, I'll go there. Uh, I don't know Robert very well. One of the reasons I said I agreed to come here is because I was brought up in Lawndale. I graduated Lawndale High before they closed it down, so I'm a local <laughs> Lawndale boy. So I don't mind coming back over here again. It's my old turf around here. In fact, I'm a little bit late because I ran into some guys I wrestled in high school and they're currently still wrestling. And one's from Northern California down here for a seminar, and the other one owns Nautilus by the Sea in Manhattan Beach. Uh, a lot of the things we're gonna do, I'm gonna try to start you off with a Sansu entrance. You throw a punch, we'll do this. However, what I show you in the, on the air, going to the ground, is going to work if you were on the ground. I just can't say we're gonna, we're gonna go over ground fighting because how many fights do you people start with? Okay, you sit there and I'll start here and let's start fighting. This isn't where fights begin. Um, is anybody here a wrestler by any chance? Have wrestled, any wrestling experience? Has anybody here trained with any of the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Gracie Machados? You're none, none of your shoot fighters either, I take it. Okay, well, Surround, so surrounded, much surrounded some wrestling when he was in junior high, high school. Oh, you did? Okay. Work out a little bit better. You might catch on a few things. Um, we're going to start out standing up and do these locks as you go to the ground. <clears throat> if you've watched the Gracies, you know that I admit to you, they are very good on the ground. Very good. 
They know what they're doing. I hate to toot their horn because I believe a Sansu artist should take them on. They are not very good on their feet. They are not. They have about three or four basic takedowns. And if you can defeat that takedown, you've got them. If you can lock them while going down, lock them out, they're not going to be able to get out of it. That's the whole key to this. As a Sansu student and practitioner, you should control the fight all the way. From the time that you started or they started, whichever way you want it to go, till it finishes, you should be in total control, both standing and on the ground. And I'm going to give you some ground techniques from standing to the ground. And I hope to hit from head to toe and just give you a minor area. But this, this, this grappling arts is very, very broad. I mean, it's, I can go on for a, quite a few days and you still wouldn't comprehend it all. Because everything I teach you today, you forget tomorrow. Because you'd be trying to remember that. So what I'm going to do is while I show you these, pick something out that you like and work on it. Um, I, I need someone to work out with, preferably somebody that's not injured in my size. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Go go ahead. Out? Uh, no, I, I'll take an upper belt. I'm going to work on a few techniques and yeah, I, I may speed through some of these. Fortunately, we're a small class where I can get the, you know, a lot of these. I, I, you guys are fortunate, I'll tell you right now, because I only teach black belts. Every class I teach of is only black belts. You're lucky I'm a Lawndale boy. <laughs> um, so you're going to be getting some, probably some training that uh, other Sansu studios don't get at, at your level right now because I only teach black belt classes. And there, there's a reason for that is, and I'll tell you what the reason is, is you, un you need to understand Sansu at a lower level before you venture off into ground fighting and, and grappling arts and stuff like that. It, and I don't want to confuse you with your current training, but I'm going to add some things in here and you'll see what I mean. I haven't had a chance to work you. There's a little saying right here I want you guys all to see. I don't know if you guys know who General Sun Tzu is. Have you ever heard, anybody heard of General Sun Tzu? You have. You know he's a very, very, he was a very intelligent warlord. In West Point they still study his plans, his battle plans today. One of the things he said way back in China is, uh, knowledge precedes victory, ignorant precedes defeat. So an intelligent fighter is going to be a stupid fighter every day. And by the way, yeah, but currently I've, uh, through some calculations, found out that just about 65 to 70 percent of our population has been exposed to some type of, some type of fighting art. So chances are when you get in a fight, it's not going to be with somebody who's not trained. You're going to have somebody who either watched movies and picked up something or actually was in karate or something for a week to a year. You're going to find intelligent fighters. When I started in the martial arts in 1969, I was a little kid, uh, I started in an art called San, uh, Kung Fu, but it wasn't San Tzu. And everybody looked at me, well, what was Kung Fu? What's that? Jimmy used to call it Karate Kung Fu, if you see his old certificates, because nobody knew Kung Fu, so he called it Karate Kung Fu. After the TV show came out, everybody got to know who Kung Fu was. So, um, it's good. I've got back a long time on these things. Let's go through some techniques. 